Hi friends, May Flom here. This is a mat that I just finished cleaning. So what I did with your Scan and Cut and with your Scan and Cut mats, see how there's like a little tiny, just little teeny tiny bits. Those little teeny tiny bits affect the stickiness. Oh, that's much better of your mat. So what I do is I usually start at one corner or in, and I yeah I like to go like so. You can go all the way straight back and forth, but I like to try to get the little bits off in short swipes. And then if I start to notice fibers and such, I'll turn to a fresh clean area and repeat the process until I clean the whole mat. Now I like to do just a little bit at the corners first, just so that I'm not swiping all the stuff all over, but it's no, no reason to do that. It's personal preference. Once you've done this, what you need to do is set your mat aside to air dry. Once it's air dried, you're going to want to put the dust cover back on. You always want to have your dust cover on. So in this video, normally in my Scan and Cut videos, what you see me do is I create projects. I show you tutorials that you yourself can try or make different versions of and hopefully use to be inspired in your crafting. In this particular video, I want to just take a couple minutes to talk about mats, talk about materials, talk about expectations, and hopefully help you along if you have a Scan and Cut. Uh, these are the Scan and Cut DX mats. However, everything I'm going to say applies to any Scan and Cut. The only exception is the DX can cut up to three millimeters thick, such as this three millimeter felt. The other Scan and Cuts cannot cut as thick. So that is going to be the one difference Although I will say the other difference will be the DX mats have an arrow. They have a direction that they get fed into. The standard mats could be put in if you have a different model other than the DX. Scan and cut one, scan and cut two. You could put the mat in either direction. It was up to you. So those differences aside, everything I'm going to tell you, it is the same no matter what. Now this is a standard mat. This is a low tack mat. I get a lot of questions about which one people should have. If you really want to mostly work from one mat, and if most of your materials are fairly normal, you know, cardstock and papers and fabrics and felts and things, the standard mat is your, generally speaking, your go to. There's a couple of exceptions, and I'll tell you them now. The first exception is when a standard mat is brand new. You do just want to have care that it's extremely sticky brand new to the point where some specialty papers, sometimes my watercolor paper on a brand new standard mat might just be so sticky that the paper itself separates and some of it wants to stick here. If this happens to you, generally speaking, you can soak that paper in water and then gently roll it off, continue to use your mat, everything will be fine. I prefer to avoid such messes altogether. So what I want to really get into in this video is how I prep materials, how I decide what to mat to use, and how I go about my business of creating with the Scan and Cut. So what I tend to do when I have a project, let's say I'm going to cut some detail out of vinyl because vinyl is going to be the most detailed you can cut. It is super thin, it is super light, it is very smooth and it doesn't have the separation of the fibers that you would get with like say a fabric. A fabric you're going to be limited based on the fabric weave. If we have a very rough let's say burlap type of weave where it's you know real loose and you can see big holes through it, well if you go to try to cut that super fine and super detailed it's not going to do very well because it can't. It physically can't. So I always try to remind people of that but also I always try to remember that myself, that what I want to do, now you'll notice I'm just kind of gently pressing this down. Generally speaking, I just, if I've got a material like vinyl, I don't need to sit here and shove and really make sure that it's really stuck down. Usually, especially a freshly cleaned mat. You see how lovely how that is and it's holding down, but what I can see is there is an air bubble in the middle. And this does matter a little bit in the sense that that means that air bubble, that area was not stuck down to my mat. So if I notice that, I wanna press go again and press a little more to make sure that my material is evenly stuck to my mat. I am wanting to make sure that my material is stuck on the mat and that when I insert it into the machine and go to cut, that it's not going to, the second the blade hits, the blade has to put some pressure on my material. So if it's stuck down, we're good. 
if my material was not stuck down, then when the blade hits, it's going to pop off or move with the try to move with the blade because it's not stuck. Now you can hear this is <laughs> the, my mat is nice and sticky again now that I just cleaned it. But also vinyl tends to want it's slick and light. It tends to want to stick really nicely. So generally speaking, I don't have many problems at all with vinyl as a material. The one thing you will want to watch, I've got it right here. You will want to watch that when you go to stick your material and go to lift it off, make sure you get it at the edge and get all the way up. The Make sure you're not getting here where you're separating. If it's a material that can separate, make sure you're not separating it. And I like using this little tool to help me lift off anyway, because it usually, if there's something that's like a little too stuck or wants to kind of stay stuck to the mat, this usually helps me slide everything off. Although again, vinyl is especially smooth and slick. Papers, same thing. We always want to make sure that this is nice and pressed on here so that when we go again, when we go to cut paper, we can get pretty detailed with and paper does not really require a lot of preparation. Usually speaking, this is another material where it's just a matter of placing it where you want. My one suggestion to you is if you're going to do a very detailed cut on paper or really any material, go ahead and it's not a full sheet. If it's not a full sheet, go ahead and put that dust cover back over so that you can really press. I'm very barely, barely pressing here. I mean, really get in there and press and make sure you've got a beautiful seal and everything is really well stuck down before you begin cutting. Because as those detailed, this is just my craft pick here, but as those detailed cuts get made, you wanna make sure that every bit of that material is stuck so that other bits of that material are not trying to lift off the mat. You don't want some of the material as it gets cut, if it starts to lift off the mat, it's gonna start causing problems for your cuts, especially if you're looking at a detailed cut. Now, most materials we're, we're talking about, here's some adhesive glitter sheet, same exact thing. Most materials, what I will do, and this is a low tack mat again, but it's in really good shape right now, so it's doing well. Most materials that are lighter, that are super thin, a low tack mat is probably fine, or a well-used standard mat, depending on what you've got. What do you have? What will work the best? So this one here, well, would have worked just fine. Again, it's the same kind of a process. As we work into different kinds of materials, so here is a fabric back cork material. This is something I've been playing with. Well, again, we're going to want to press it down. And this is a material where I would not expect an extremely detailed cut out of this because it is cork. And cork kind of reminds me in some ways, some of the foams, like this particular foam that I use sometimes, uh, if you try to get too detailed with the cork, it'll either kind of bunch up and get stuck is the way I describe it, or with the holes in it, it just won't show up because there's little holes in the cork. So to expect tiny detail when there's already holes in here making problems for you anyway, that's not going to work. So again, we want to remember to keep realistic expectations. Now this one, I'm pressing down, but these edges are not staying stuck. This is how I know the mat that I have is simply not sticky enough for the material that I have. And that doesn't super surprise me. We're just gonna need to go up and this is gonna make a loud noise. It's a brand new mat here, never been actually used. What I will do with my materials when I go to the stickier mat is I'll press them, not super hard, but I'll just check. Number one, I'm seeing yes, now the edges are staying down, they're staying stuck. But number two, when I lift off, did it leave debris? Did it cause any problems? Did it stick so hard that I had to get in here and really shove? Because if so, I'm gonna have to kind of find some kind of a middle ground, perhaps some kind of stabilizer with this to work on the less tacky mat. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But in this case, it worked great. So, and I'll show you, remember I was talking about, if I'm using a partial piece of material so that I don't accidentally jam my little, um, scraper tool here into the adhesive, I like to just kind of push this down so that I've got a flat, nice flat surface to work on. Well, I can put this down and press all nicely. Then I would remove this completely to use it in the machine. And this will be stuck, this will be beautiful, this will make all of our designs, and when we're done, we very simply lift it off and cover our mat back up. And by the way, when you are actually working, you wanna pull this mat all the way off to cut. 
I'm just happen to not be doing that because we're not cutting materials in this video. We're just, oh, and there's the mat sticking to each other. We're just taking a look at how, 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 how we go about this. So I mentioned stabilizing and I'll talk about that right now. Some materials, so like uh, craft foam really doesn't, you know, doesn't need it. Paper generally doesn't need it. Most things generally don't need it, but there are a couple. And the one that really comes to mind for me is fabric. You can get a fabric stabilizing sheet that you can put on your mat and it'll be super sticky and really good for fabric because it pins it down. Fabric, it's just, I mean, if you compare how this bends and folds, well, to pay, there's no comparison. This is much more. So it's much easier for this to want to wiggle around and move. Now, in most cases on a standard mat, although I'm not going to pull that one back out this minute, if we use our tools and we make sure that, you know, things are very well sealed onto our mat and we're doing a fairly simple cut, etc., etc., yeah, we can usually get away with it. However, what I tend to do, if I'm cutting fabric, I'm probably doing something. Maybe I'm making a doll or a pin cushion. Maybe I'm working on like a little felt critter with some fabric accents. Generally not cutting a lot personally, not cutting a lot of fabric for things where I'm going to sew this fabric to something else without wanting to iron it on or have it be a little more stiff or something else. So, I will usually put on either a stabilizer or iron on material and iron it on an iron on style stabilizer or material and put it on my fabric, iron it on, and then put that side down on my mat and press as usual. This does two things. Number one, I find that that kind of, usually it's like kind of a parchment paper type backing that I leave on to cut. It sticks really nicely to my mat and holds my fabric there really nicely. Number two, it preps my fabric for whatever I'm doing next, assuming that I'm doing something next with it. Now, again, if you're not, there's fabric stabilizer sheets for the mats that you can purchase separately to work with that. Just I'm telling you, for me personally, the way I craft, I generally don't do that. The third thing to remember is your expectations. That we were talking about how, you know, like a burlap loose weave or a cork, you're not going to get as detailed as you would with a vinyl. Same goes with your fabric. Some fi fabrics are going to be much more receptive to really fine patterns versus some are going to be better with really simple patterns or bigger shapes. It's all going to depend. If you're ever in question, well, ask yourself if you feel like you could take you know, a scissors or a craft knife or something and cut that yourself really fine detail and it would work or would it bunch up and get yucky and wouldn't work? That will kind of give you a, a just a vague guideline of when the scanning cut will work versus won't. Now, I mean, that's not to say that I can cut, you know, the super fine details that I get off of the scanning cut, say, on vinyl. I'm, I'm not that great with a craft knife. And one of the main reasons I love that scanning cut, because it does all that hard work for me. But is it technically possible if someone was really good with their craft knife? And if it is, then probably you could do it. And if it's not, then probably don't expect the scanning cut to somehow to be able to do it with the material that you can. Now, I'm bringing this example out, this is on the Brother blog. So this I did with felt, but also vinyl, glitter and matte vinyl, because uh, number one, I ironed it all together. The stitches are totally decorative. And number two, this let me get so much tiny detail without any worry or any additional stabilizer because the iron-on vinyls, they come, you know, with their their backing sheet and then the material itself. So I was able to cut all those little teeny tiny pieces out and then just iron them on to my little St. Patrick's Day ornament here that you can see. Isn't he cute? So much fun. But it was the right choice. The felt was better for the bigger pieces, the vinyl was better for the smaller, and then a little button nose well, the thread all together. Just an example of how knowing your material, knowing what you're trying to do versus what's gonna work best on the machine, what's gonna cut the best for what you're trying to do. And sometimes for something, you know, this is a very thick felt and it will work. Should I put a stabilizer on it? Not necessarily, it's pretty, it's pretty firm. It, it'll work pretty well on a nice sticky mat and in doing small testing, what I found is only a tiny, tiny bit of fibers come off. So it's not going to ruin my mat. I can easily get those tiny fibers off. So yes, this 
onto a standard mat, pressed real nicely as we would, would work really well, just fine for most of my projects that I would want this kind of felt for. It's going to come down to taking a look at what you've got, what you're trying to do, and putting together the best material and supply with your mat, with your scan and cut to create whatever vision is in your head. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video because I've kind of covered, I'm looking at my desk here, I've covered all of this topics and materials that I intended to cover. I'm just gonna give this guy a quick wipe down just to make sure since I want it all, uh-huh, I see a few little fibers here, just to make sure it's nice and clean. So if you have any questions or specific materials you'd like me to talk about or topics about maintenance or anything with the scan and cut machine, for this video series, please feel free to let me know because I get a lot of requests for these kind of videos and I'm happy to do them. So I'm happy to add your requests to my pending videos to make. And if you have any questions that you would like to ask me personally, of course, you can always leave me a comment or across social media, email, whatever you prefer. I'm always happy to talk with you about getting the most out of your crafting time and of course, specifically your scan and cut. This is a machine I really love and I use all the time. It makes my life better regularly. I mean, I was able to come up with this super fun kite card, again, also up on the Brother Scan and Cut blog. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video just so you guys can find it. But any idea I can come up with, however crazy, it will help me make it. I just need to make sure I'm using the right materials, using the right tools, and using the right techniques so that I am setting myself and my machine up to win, to cut successfully and have a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. I know I'm just some fun projects that I've been up to here. I will see you next time.